You know, one of the things that I've often believed in is that technology and even some processes should be submissive to the methodology, that the strategy, how we're gonna approach this starts first. The second thing that I believed in is that one should be able to articulate that methodology in a very simple way. They should actually be able to draw it on a single piece of paper. I call that fitted on a page. So when I started working for the church, this is one of the first things that I tackled was, can I draw what we do as a church on a single piece of paper? Now I know this is oversimplified. By design, it's intended to be. But this is our version of church on a piece of paper. And I feel like our job is to take somebody at the very top of this. I like to just call them a not yet Christian. We take them through some journey, some life cycle. So they spit out the bottom, plug in your title, a disciple, fully committed follower of Christ, a leader, a coach, your name. And we do that because we know that if we're effective at helping to make a disciple, they're going to go out to their area of influence, their schools or their workplaces or their families, and they're going to bring more people into the kingdom and into your church. So this is a growth strategy for churches. And I'd like to take just a moment and walk you through the pieces. The top part of this, often known as a sales funnel or a marketing funnel, right, or a prospect funnel, people call it sometimes, is really the idea of how do I get somebody who doesn't know you yet to know you? The first level of that is just awareness. We really just want to make them aware that the church exists. That's our display ads and our search ads and our billboards and your bumper stickers. The intent of that layer is really just that, just let them know that the church exists. Our goal is to move them from awareness to consideration. Now, when somebody's considering going to church, we did some studies and we found that the number one place people go to when they're considering a church is actually a website. They visit 12 to 15 different church websites before they'll ever show up at a campus, right? Now, what we did is when we look at some of these sites, they're really highly member-centric. The problem is, is that one of the things we asked those prospects, like, what are you looking for when you go to it, was to see if the church is weird or not. And it's not that what we do as members is weird, but to somebody who doesn't go to church yet, some of the things can feel a little weird. So we highly recommend that people look at their website through the lens of a prospect and look at any design changes that may need to happen. Our goal from a consideration layer is to get them to evaluate us, the church. Now, historically, it came out of the automotive industry. Our version of that is a test drive. We just wanted people to get on the lot, smell the leather, and fall in love with the product. I think this is a first time visit for churches. Right? How do we get them in to understand what we're all about? Now, a lot of folks on their first time visit try to instantly get them into a starting point class or, or get them into small group. We always say like, think if that was your test drive and as soon as you showed up and I tried to put you in an extended warranty or something like that, the goal is simply to get them to come back to a second visit and or a third visit. From there, we ultimately want them to raise their hand. Now, in the marketplace, this would be called purchase. They actually buy the product. For us, it's I'm in, I'm gonna be part of this. This is where the fun kicks in. This is where we move from this idea of a sales funnel to an engagement wheel. So all I said was, what are the things, like if we could wave a magic wand and we could say, man, we hope that these people do these things because we found that when they engage in these types of activities, the probability of their heart being transformed for the Lord goes way up. So what are those things? And this is maybe a little bit unique with your church. They're different across, but there's some significant similarities that we all do. One of them is we hope people commit their life to Christ, typically through baptism or declaration of salvation. We want them to worship the Lord. This is often a weekend experience. This is prayer. This is Bible reading. We want them to connect with like-minded people. That often takes the form of small group, but it can also be some of the events we do and the reason we build cafes and all the other stuff that we put together. Serve. Often this is serving on our campuses, but also in our community world, mission trips, you name it. The idea is how do I serve others so I myself can grow closer to Christ. And then share, often learning to give your testimony to others and invite people to church and give. We broke that person into two areas, sort of the tithe and then radical generosity. Now the key here is we drew this as a wheel because what we found is even though the elements are similar, not everybody's at the same place. People come in and out of this discipleship journey at different places based on rhythm of life, spiritual formation, uh, background, religion background with their family. So the idea is we shouldn't look at this linear process that everybody goes through, and we certainly shouldn't think that they're all at the same place. So again, we draw it as a wheel, and then finally what we want is people to kind of spit out the bottom, A, plug in your term, disciple, follower of Christ, leader. I always say this person at the bottom, this disciple has two jobs, help other people through their life cycle and bring other people into the top of the fold. 
right? Now, here's what's different. Here's where things change a little bit. Even though we need to manage the whole life cycle, I recommend that churches focus predominantly on member engagement. You got to do all of it. But on average, we say we spend about 70% of our energy on member engagement. And we do that because we know if we're effective in creating this person, on average, they're going to bring more people in more efficiently and more effectively than we could ever do with an advertisement. The second thing that we recommend, do it at an individual level. That most of the time we talk about our discipleship journey in aggregate. We assume everybody's at the same place, but we're not. So what we want to do is know where Bob's at. We want to know where Jill is at. We want to be able to communicate with them very, very uniquely into where they are. So three things I think a church needs to be able to do to help grow through this. One, know where their people are. You often need to use data to know where your people are in their life cycle. We need to be able to match them intelligently to something they can do next. So take that data, build some intelligence around it, and come up with some next steps people can take. And then we need a way to tell those people how to take that step in the most personalized, relevant way we possibly can. And then hopefully when we're done with those three things, knowing, matching, and telling, we just measure it, right? And we analyze the data and we try to get better day in and day out. So again, this is the life cycle. I think it's a key to growth within churches, and we're really happy to come alongside you.